What is up boys? This is The Average Man Adventures and this is my Magic Cube Flash replacement. Let's get into it. So our journey starts right here with the Fujifilm disposable camera. This is what first got me into film photography. After dabbling in disposable cameras, I then got my first film camera, the Kodak Ultra F9. And like many others, I love this camera until I went to take a picture with flash and realized no matter what, the flash never works on it. Since the point of this camera was to have a camera I could take wherever I want and take pictures of me and my friends, it, this not having flash seemed to be a really big issue once I took it to several dark locations. One day while rummaging through a thrift shop, I found this. A Kodak Pocket Instamatic 30. And at first I had no idea what it was, but I thought it would be perfect. It's a small form factor and it would fit in my pocket and I'd be able to take it anywhere. But it had another issue. These didn't come with flashes in the 70s. Instead, they came with these magic cubes. Now the issue with magic cubes is that you only get four shots with flash. And after that, you're out of luck. Unfortunately, I never got to use my pocket and somatic 30 all that much because upon bringing it home, I realized it was broken. I attempted to fix it, but was unable to. So then I went on eBay and found a Kodak Pocket Instamatic 60. But this one has the same issue, needing magic cubes for flash. Now I didn't think using magic cubes as flash would be such a big issue since they're small and I could easily transport them around. But upon looking up their price on eBay, I realized it wouldn't be financially smart to use them as a flash. So instead I decided that it would be best if I designed my own flash that uses the magic cube slot. So the build first started off with measurements of both the camera body itself and the magic cube connector. The hardest part was the connector since it took so many iterations to get right. Getting my calipers in the tight spaces was difficult but after 3D printing a couple of the iterations it was easy enough to get to fit. I didn't record any of the modeling at first so I only have footage of minor adjustments I was making to an already designed circuit board housing. In this design, since it is the bottom of the housing I'm showing right here. I had to accommodate a way to attach the magic cube adapter, a place to keep the battery secured, and a way to attach the flash button. The circuit board has everything except the flash button already in place, so it was just building around most of that. The slot in the center is for a rod that passes through a hole in the circuit board and keeps the top and bottom of the housing connected. This next part is the battery compartment cover, and I just had to make the pegs slightly smaller to better fit into the slots in the body housing. Here is the top housing. It has a hole in the top that a switch snaps into place in, and a cutout in the front that the flash will be glued into. It also has the slot continued from the bottom housing that the rod seats into. Finally, we have the assembly view. Here you can see the Magic Cube adapter, bottom housing, top housing, and battery compartment cover all in their correct place. From the drawing in this assembly, you can see I had to get creative to attach the Magic Cube adapter. Since I was 3D printing this, I had to make it separate with a unique L shape that will allow me to later connect the bottom housing and Magic Cube adapter together like a puzzle piece. Now with my parts designed, I just have to throw them in Cura and send them to my printer. Since this is going to be a prototype, I'm using a resolution of 0.3 millimeters. If I try to make this again, I'll probably be going with a cleaner print. I used white PETG for this print on my Anycubic Mega Pro.
I tried threading the flash button into the bottom housing to no avail. So after fumbling around with it for a while, I decided to make some modifications. But not until after getting burnt. Ha! Here I adjusted the height for the flash button hole and then widened the slots for better fitment on the battery compartment cover. After some imperfections in the first print, I adjusted the orientation of some of the parts. Oops, accidentally flipped off the lights. As mentioned before, here are the different iterations of the bottom housing and the Magic Cube adapter 3D printed. As you can see, I got the final product pretty similar to the original. Now that all the fun stuff is finished, it's time to assemble the flash. The first step was plastic welding the Magic Cube adapter onto the bottom housing. I didn't do too well, I just basically scribbled back and forth like I was coloring inside a coloring book, but I didn't burn through however, so that's good at the very least. For this, I'm using an old soldering iron. Unfortunately, I didn't attach it perfectly straight, but it was good enough to still work and that's all that mattered. The flash circuitry was out of a developed Fujifilm disposable camera. You can find these on eBay for cheap with a working flash. I'm not too sure on the longevity of these since they're only made for 27 shots, but I haven't had a problem with it yet in the countless times I've tested it. I'm not using anything else from these cameras except for the circuit board, so I either dumped or stored everything else. Now that the flash is out, be careful because the capacitor probably still has a charge on it. I know this all too well. First I'm testing out the flash to make sure I'm not wasting my time. As you can see everything is soldered in place so next you'll see me melting the solder and removing the flash bulb. If you're following along at home be careful because these are fragile and need to be kept together to work perfectly. Now with the flash removed, I'm going to wire in a new flash that I'll be able to lay flat. In the flash's original orientation, I would have had to make a flash housing taller than it is wide. With resoldering it, I can do the opposite. I'm making sure not to touch the capacitor leads and to connect the wires at the correct points. It's pretty tricky with how short the wires are, but with enough finagling, it can be done. Now for the moment of truth. And it works, there we go. The full screen will be showing the switch being soldered on while the picture in picture will be of the flash button being put in place. The most difficult part of both of these processes was soldering the wires after cutting them short so that they could fit inside the housing. Everything was just left at an awkward angle and I really had to fight it. It makes it a lot easier if you have a good soldering iron. With my old one I wasn't able to melt the solder fast enough and get the wire in place. So make sure you're careful not to overheat or break the circuit board here. Because of how I designed it, both the switch and push button had to already be in place before being soldered in. Another moment of truth. And there's no doubt in my mind, works perfectly.
Now with all the wiring done, I can close the housing. Since I didn't put any screw holes, I will be just plastic welding it shut. Just like I did with the Magic Cube adapter. With it all sealed, I just have to make sure it works for a final time. This is how it looks on my Kodak Pocket Instamatic 60. It didn't come out the nicest, but it was just a proof of concept, so I could refine the process and do it much nicer if I choose to later on. As for right now, I think I'm going to see how long I can use this one. I haven't tried it out yet with film, but as soon as I do and get the photos developed, I'll be sharing it on this channel, so be on the lookout for that. In comparison, this is how the original Magic Cube looks on it. I don't have any flashes left so I can't compare them, but I'm sure plenty of people have set these off on YouTube before. Thank you for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or any ideas on how to improve the flash, please leave them in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks and see you next time!